Ladies and gents, what's going on? Hope you're having a splendid day out there. And this game here, it's a treat. I put a lot of effort into my content. I put a lot of effort into making sure each game's a little different each day. That is very difficult for me to do with the same game. But this game here, I have never uploaded a video like it. So I hope you're ready for it. We have some 4v4 Fortress. So it's a team game. Now, a little bit of perspective on the teams, all right? This team that we're looking at right now uh, are all USA players. And they are USA players that are extremely underrated. In fact, here, uh, we're going to have the bracket from the Silver League of Nations Cup shown. And you could see United States B, that's right, the players we're looking at here, beat Spain. That is Tato. That is Lan. That is just some pro players. Beat Spain 3-1. Unfortunately for them, they then lost to Italy 3-2, which was actually quite close. They could have maybe won that series as well. So anyways, these guys are underrated players, play together a lot, and I'm really personally very happy for them as an American. They actually outperformed USAA as we lost in the round of 24 of Silver League. But anyways, that's not what we're here to talk about. That I just need to give you that perspective because the fact of the matter is these guys are good, okay? They're good, and they are higher rated than the opponents. And the opponents... We'll get the introductions in in a second, but only one of them has a ranking in 1v1s. Couldn't find a, lot, a whole lot of information about the other individuals, okay? So there's a strategy at play here, and you've already seen the title and the thumbnail. Uh, you're probably like, what, what, what's, what's happening? Uh, what, this doesn't look like what you said in the title. Um, and the strategy is insane, okay? So let's start first with the, uh, the American team. We have Locke. Um, Locke is playing as the Ethiopians on the flank here, okay? The map is Fortress. You start with stone walls, more villagers, pre-built farms. It's normally a very economic-based map. Um, in the green, we have Little Tuna. Uh, and I asked, I was like, is that Big Tuna's little brother? No, it's just another account for Big Tuna, who's the guy who played on USAB. But anyways, he's playing as the Slavs. Uh, really like the civilization for this map. It's one of the rare moments where I feel like Slavs are top, top tier Starting with the farms means you can take advantage of that bonus, and, and their economy is just insane. But anyways, we move on. Uh, to Rooster is playing as the Japanese here in the pocket. And then here in the gray, we've got uh, Mongols for the flank. Uh, so very good late game civilizations, with maybe the exception of the Japanese. Over here in the red, we have Gots for uh, Felipe. In the yellow, we have Andrek playing as the Khmer. In the purple here... We have a very long name I cannot pronounce, and I do not even know what it means, uh, but we'll just say Bebo, uh, playing as the Poles. And then in the green, we have Italians for GZ Alex. Now, ladies and gents, the team that I just introduced, they are going to attempt a strategy, and it is a strategy that is banned in tournaments. But I know this strategy is catching on, and I know people have been talking about it because people have brought it up to me and said, hey... This is really fun. And that strategy incorporates something called sling, which means sending resources to your teammate. Okay? So the way it works in the game is you can send resources to your teammate starting in feudal. Uh, in castle age, there's a technology you can research. Uh, or actually, let, let me back up. In the past, um, there, coinage was available in feudal age. I should probably double check this actually. Shoot, Hardy, if I get this wrong, just, just edit it in, please. I'm going to make you do some research. But anyways, um, coinage is a technology that reduces the tax when you send resources to a teammate, okay? So if you are slinging, if you are sending your resources to a teammate, uh, in the feudal age, there is a tax associated with it. And that is something that all three of these players are willing to risk. They're okay with that because it is going to be one player for this team out to try and kill all the other players. It, it, you might not realize how you know, silly that is and how busted slinging actually is, and there's a reason it's banned in tournaments, but you're going to find out here in a second that situation. So everyone usually goes fast castle, but it's not what we're seeing here. You can see all the other players in this team, they're getting their eco upgrades, and you have a market for purple, you have a market for yellow, and we have a market for orange. And they're sending resources. Now you can see the tax, okay? So, this is pretty much all these three players are going to do. They're going to make villagers, and they're going to send resources to red. And red is goths. Now goths have cheap infantry, but goths also have the faster spamming infantry after the perfusion upgrade in the imperial age. So typically, 
you're going to have like a, a bit of a boom scenario where you drop your town centers, add a lot more villagers, and then get economy. But no, uh, there's going to be a massive influx of resources for red, and red is not really going to need his own economy. It, it's a really interesting game here, okay? So I don't think that the other team knows about this at this point. Uh, you know, th there are some small indicators, like maybe the feudal age times, for example. But I had never recognized these players. I, I play a lot of Age of Empires too. I pay attention to streams, and I'm always looking at what games are happening and always downloading stuff to look at it uh, because I want to bring games to you guys, right? I've never recognized any of these guys. And they might have known they're the underdog, but I, if I had to guess, because these civilizations were stacked like this, this is all planned, right? They came into this game with this strategy in mind. And it's pretty crazy. So look at Green's resources. He's about to get to Castle Age. Look at Red's resources right now. Red has four players' resources, plus, you know, whatever that tax is, right? He's already prepping barracks, so he can go for spam and imp. Now, typically, you need two buildings to go up to the next stage, or... You need to have uh, a castle. So since on Regicide Fortress, you start with the castle. It's perfect. He, he's on the way to the Imperial Age already. Now, you, you, know, you might think, well, maybe he'll research Anarchy, right? Anarchy is a technology for the Goths. It allows you to produce Huskarls out of your barracks. Well, there's a reason we have Italians over here. Because the Italians have a team bonus where you can produce... the uh, Excuse me. The entire team can produce a unit called Condotiero. And Condos... Are a very strong unit, especially with an imp timing, especially when you're being triple slung and y you have the goth spam. Okay, so 22 villagers for red, who's just receiving resources non stop here. And eventually, I'm going to remove these pop ups, but I want you guys to have an idea of how insane it is, really. So, so we've got four barracks for red. Again, I don't think at this point... Well, actually, no, I take it back. I think at this point, if the USA team is paying attention, they should be realizing that this is a sling scenario because you have three players still in feudal. But if you don't really know the level of the opponent, you might just assume, okay, this is going to be an easy game, boys. Right? Easy game, easy win, easy points, and let's just go play another one before we go to bed or something, right? So everyone's adding economy, doing the standard stuff. And they're going to see Red's imp time. And, you know, listen, I'm going to give a lot of thoughts on the strategy. There's going to be a lot of pros, a lot of cons. All these things are going to say, guys. All I'm going to say is, I love how Red has gone for the Siege Tower here, right? Because it is a stonewalled map. They will see Gotzer and Imp at 13 minutes and 45 seconds. They must know it's a sling scenario now, and here come the condos. So he's getting conscription. Condos already produce really fast. We'll see if he ends up getting perfusion later. And everyone, like like orange right now, you gotta send the res. Send the res, my friend. Send it over. Give it all to red. So here he goes. So, you know, typically you think you're gonna have a little bit of time. This is Gray's perspective. Uh, you think you're going to have time until the rush happens, but there's already 12 condos, 13 condos. Now, 80 HP on this unit, which is 20 less than a knight without bloodlines. 10 base attack, and decent amounts of armor as well as the upgrades are coming in. And it's, like, super cheap for the goths because goths have cheap infantry. This is kind of funny to me. Red got housed. Red's like, crap, I don't have pop space. But look at this. <laughs> Now, Goths also destroy buildings a bit faster every age. They don't have access to the tech arson like other civs do, but they have that bonus to kind of complement it. So this is Gray's perspective. I, I imagine he probably jumped out of his chair at this point. <laughs> He's just got <laughs> condos streaming into his base. And this is experience for you, okay? Gray says, I need to leave my base. Very important moment of this game. He's just like, well, this will kill me. I have no way of stopping this. And he is spot on in that assessment of the situation. I think I, in this scenario, would probably sit back and be like, uh, you know, and, and like not really have an idea of what to do. But Ray knows, and he's like trying to flee right, right now. So he's sending Vils over here. He's sending Vils over here. Again, it is three players, or sorry, 
Yeah, three players slinging resources to one player. And we haven't even gotten started yet, okay? It's only 40 infantry. You think that's it? No, this gets crazier. So, Red's gonna melt this TC. Just completed Blast Furnace. The castle won't do anything to these bad boys. And this is all on the back of having 27 villagers. Gray could be defeated here. If Red were to find Gray, he could absolutely be defeated. I don't know. This is very ambitious. <laughs> I don't know. He wanted to take out the siege tower so his teammate couldn't get hit. I'd be like, guys, prepare yourselves. It's coming to you next. We have one player going against four other players right now. It's pretty ridiculous, right? So obviously army count's insane. Red's up to 65 infantry now. How does he have the pop space for this? He's probably getting pop capped at some point. He's got to get houses up. Look at how many there are! This is insane! Remember when I said that I don't think I've uploaded a game like this before? This is insane! And okay, I'm going to turn off. Now, we do actually have Gray sending resources to Teal, which is interesting. It's just to help him so he doesn't die. I'm going to turn this off, okay? I'm going to turn it off. It's just way too spammy, and that's all they're going to do, right? We get the picture, all right? We have the idea. Look at this swarm. We, are in, we haven't even hit the 20-minute game time yet. And, you know, Teal's prepping Samurai, which should be pretty good against Kondos, but... You need a whole lot of samurai, and you're not going to be able to afford that many samurai when red is receiving triple sling, as we call it. Also, I saw this game already. This is funny to me. It just We're going to keep you updated on Gray's Mangadai. He wants to do something, and he actually micros these things forever. It is really funny. Anyways, Teal, not having fun, does not think this is funny, and Teal is just getting massacred right now. And the same thing could happen. Like, yeah, you can make samurai, but where are your resources? Well, you've been investing into economy. So, you're going to lose your town centers, and you're going to lose all your economy. Now, Gray is over here, still producing some vills. Gray's adding a new TC here, so Gray's not out, out of the game. But it was the correct move from Red, in my opinion, to continue to just shift focus over to the other player, right? Because Gray is at a state where he can't really help. Uh, these villagers are going to die. I look at, look at Orange. She's like, finally, I get to kill something. Wait. Why are the market events back? Oh, tribute events. I'm stupid. I'm so sorry. Anyways, click the wrong button. Normally, tracking tributes isn't something we need to do. Here's Gray's Mangadai. <laughs> this is what I mean. Pretty funny, if you ask me. And so, at this point, green and blue, they have been given a heads up, I'm sure, right? And they're just, uh, you know, these other two are like, yo, we're dying. We're trying our best to hold on here. But you need to prep something strong. So green is on the way to the Imperial Age. Green is making Boyars. Now, if there was ever a unit to stop these things, it would probably be the Boyard. You've got tons of melee armor on the Boyard. We're not even looking at upgraded ones yet. And they do a lot of attack. So they, they don't receive a lot of damage from melee units, like infantry. And they also dish out a lot of damage as well. This is not so nice of you, Greg. You, you, you brought... The Mangadai, or, or sorry, the, the condos directly over your teammate. It's probably the last place he wanted those to be right now. So, okay, so let's keep track. Uh, this TC's gone down. This TC's going down. There's now 87 condos on the field. Red's building more barracks in the middle of the map. The spam's insane. The eco count is still higher for the Americans, but, you know, much of that could be teals. And Red's still determined to take out the TC, so he's going to do that. He is losing some units, but it's absolutely worth it, right? Because your units are super cheap. And, you know, you want to kill players off as quickly as possible here. KD's probably ridiculous right now. I'm not going to have that up on screen, though, because we do want to see other things. And so, uh, the title of this, the, the thumbnail alluded to a one-player versus four situation. Will Red be able to kill the others here? I mean, Gray is in full reboom mode, right? Uh, and he's hiding in the corners, which is very good. But Teal is now gone as well. It's ridiculous. Look at the swarm! Look at this! There's, <laughs> this is insane, man! I, I do feel like some sense of responsibility as a creator. Sometimes to like not show certain things in my videos. Because I know it's going to encourage you guys to, to try it. And I feel a little bad... 
Because I feel like so many people watching right now are going to be like, oh my god, we need to try this. But I, I know that this has already been catching on big time. I've had people bring up like, hey, 290, what about... You ever do Italians and Goths and Sling? It's very strong. So I figured it was finally time to make a video about it. Red's like, I know my unit's worse. Let's hope I have more of them. And so he takes this engagement. And he's going to win that engagement against Boyars. It, it's like the... You know, the only unit that might be slightly better than a Boyar in this scenario would maybe be a Teutonic Knight. Even then, I think the Boyar is is superior with the HP and the mobility anyways. But you don't get to use mobility because this is all coming right to your face. It just will not stop. 130 army for red. And they've got the score lead and everything. Now, blue's got a little teensy little raid over here. And you can see orange and yellow are starting to go Castle Age. And I think the idea behind this, this, this is ridiculous. I think the idea behind uh, Castle Age is that Red's doing enough now uh, where, you know, you, you could probably try and get those players back into the game and, and compete with Army later on. Blue is Ethiopian Archers, and, and, you know, thankfully for him, these aren't Huskarls. So Condos actually do not have a ton of Pierce armor. They look similar to a Huskarl, but they're not. Just the production speed's insane. And so Blue, Blue's hoping to mass the archers. But Green just lost the castle. And here comes the almighty siege tower again. And, like, Teal's still losing eco to this. <laughs> Teal's down to 26 villagers right now. <laughs> so, this is pretty ridiculous. Now, you know, Blue still, you know, hasn't had... He hasn't taken any eco losses. And he's got 125 villagers. And he's a very really good player, too. So, you know, the pressure's still on here. <laughs> Green's gonna add stone walls behind this because he does not want the units to come through the gate once the gates go down. Red really needs to use the siege tower here, I think. And here he goes into the siege tower. Little whoop! Love the siege tower play. And surprise. And then you just keep clicking units into the siege tower and over the siege tower. You just should continue that cycle and try and gut Green of his economy now. Now, this is a really good choke point. You've got 40 Arbalest now. They're more than enough to one-shot these condos. Red has 150 of them. This feels like he's using cheat codes. <laughs> it feels like he has unlimited resources. But this is all possible within the confines of a normal Age of Empires 2 game. Elite Boyar's in, so now we have all the melee armor I was talking about. I think they're taking one damage at this point. Yeah, they're taking one damage from... Well, actually, it's 10 plus 4. It's close to one damage a hit. But everywhere you look, there's just got spam. And Red's just making barracks everywhere. <laughs> now, I noticed Red started to make some Huskarls. So, he will need to receive resources to um, in order to afford that. Now, here's that spam we talked about. You could see Locke was sending some resources over to green as well. But you, you definitely need to consider Huskarl here. And, and there are going to be Huskarls coming out. They're not going to be elite. But it's going to actually be very difficult for the opponent to know what's a Huskarl and what's a condo. Teal's in reboot mode. 25 population out of the game. But, I mean, Gray's coming back in it, right? And so as crazy as this has been, green and blue are kind of holding. And... And now, you know, you're talking about an army count of 96 for Locke and Little Tuna here. And this, they're taking the better trades because they have the better units. So, you know, Yellow, he is still sending some res. He's got 33 farms. He's actually out of the town center here. So they're thinking, well, maybe we've done enough. We've taken two players out of the game. We haven't taken four players out of the game. Maybe now it, it could be us four up against their two in the later stages of this one, right? Well, blue and green have held on. Red's army counts way down. And you'll notice he's still receiving res, but if he's not being slung fully, he really just can't do much at all. Uh, here's a nice little raid from him, though. He's, he's doing what he can to spread out and try and kill Gray, who just doesn't have an eco. Gray is adding another town center there. Gray's at 90 villagers. And... Green and blue have a sizable force, and they are looking to send a message here. <laughs> they are looking to send the message, and that message is, um, I'm going to make you pay here, buddy, for sending resources to that guy. We did not like what the Goths sent to our way. Uh, maybe green and blue did, actually, because they're feasting. But, um, you know, we're, we're going to make you pay, and that's the right play to do it. 
The second that red isn't damaging you, the second that red isn't forcing you to defend, uh, you need to just hit the other players here. Because they are left defenseless. Well, not defenseless, actually. Orange has queued up Cav Archers, which it might be the first time I've seen Cav Archers as the Italians. Which I, I think, again, you know, maybe. Maybe it's easy to judge Orange at this point because he spent his whole game slinging resources. So it's hard to know his true skill level. But, okay, he canceled them now. It just... It doesn't seem like this other, this slinging team is necessarily quite as experienced overall. Again, I looked for their 1v1 ranks. They don't have any. Couldn't find a lot of information about any of the players. Red was 1,700, I noticed, in 1v1s. But I know Locks like Bin 2K, and I think Rooster is over 2K, and I think the other guys, they're just all much better players. But guys, this USA B team, they've held... Gray's still at 100 vills. He's like, you can kill my vills, but you can't kill all of them, and you can't focus on me while also focusing on my teammates. And so he's back in this game, and we're going to see trade, which is a great long-term thing to do here. He might come back in the game. And poor Orange, I mean, kind of left defenseless. He does have this skirmisher, which he made out of panic. You could tell he got some ranged upgrades too, thinking he needed skirms against archers, which would maybe make sense. But Orange is now going to crumble. And so much like Teal and Gray had to flee their bases because they were going to be completely overrun, Orange now has to do the same. <laughs> I, I wonder if Gray could see this and Gray's just like, Yeah, how do you like it? Get out of your own base. Yeah, get out of there. I wonder if there's some sort of justice in this. Lots of castles from green in the middle of the map where there's extra res. Red trying, but he really can only squeeze out infantry when he's receiving resources from somebody. And, and that's been purple. The poles player. Beautiful farms, I have to say. But now Orange is coming in. It's a, it's a mass evacuation. <laughs> Get on out of here. And still, you know, the Ethiopian arbs and these slab boyards continue to move on. These things are insane. It almost seems like I'm in fast speed watching these things fire. Beautiful play from Orange. Does show skill level. Very good. A little damage control there. Uh, in the end, it just buys time for these villagers to get away. It looks extremely ridiculous watching villagers just run through Purple's entire base. Probably headed towards the corner. And I think Red is probably saying, like, guys, I can't help anymore. And I'm sure you could tell by the populations in the army. This Team USA, now again, a very, very good team, an underrated team. Um, they have held against this. <laughs> and look at how great their late game is as well. Like, in the event that Red wants to try and raid Gray again, because he doesn't have army yet, full stonewall. He's, he's stonewalling the whole team right now, so they can make sure the trade is there. We have Teal extending some walls here in, a, in an open choke point. Just a lot of really good strategic things, just in case this game is a little bit closer from here. Spoiler alert, it doesn't look like it's getting closer, but Orange is going to make it to Imp! <laughs> Whoa, that's actually amazing. Well done, Orange. That took some real guts. I think a lot of people would have made a new TC here if they had their resources. Oh, boy. Uh, That's not great. I think they would have maybe gone Imp in this TC. Have you ever seen 63 villagers build a TC before? Well, there you go, guys. Right, is producing from this, it looks like. Uh, but there's just still no stopping this death ball. The Arbalest have 130 kills. The Boyars have 177. And Purple is trying to just stonewall to delay this. Which makes sense, obviously. He just hit Castle Age. So we do have Imp for Red, obviously. We do have Imp for Orange now as well. He can't really contribute with much. He's dropping another Town Center. And, well... This game is pretty over at this point. But I feel like... This would work. Let, let, let me put it to you this way. This is banned from tournaments for a reason. Okay? Sling, the way it works in tournaments, for those that are curious now. You're... It's actually... <laughs> first, it was like, you can't sling in Feudal Age. And then, people would go Castle Age and send resources. And people realized that was also really strong. So, in the most recent team game tournament, a tournament that's happening now, Nations Cup, you cannot send any resources to a teammate unless you're um, sending it down an age. 
Um, and it might even be down an age from the Imperial Age. So, for example, if you're an Imp and your Castle Age player is dying, you could send him resources. But you can't do it uh, if you're both in Castle Age. Like, that, that, that's pretty stringent, right? Like, you need a couple wood, you need a little bit of stone to repair a castle. No, you cannot do it unless you're already an Imp or an Age Up. So, you know, there was a point, I remember coinage used to be available in Feudal way back in the day. We're talking like 2017, 2016. And again, coinage reduced that tax and the devs moved it to Castle. Again, Hardy, if I got it right, make me look smart. If I didn't, please clarify that. <clears throat> I just know coinage was moved because it was an issue. And even without coinage, even with all that tax, it is still so worth it. And I think with even matchups, this is just going to win games, right? Like Gray's reboom is incredible, right? Green and blue did an amazing boom and they did a good job to hold. It's a very interesting game, but I feel as though this is this is just going to like plague the team game scene. <laughs> And so I had someone just this week say to me, T90, there's really cool strap, blah, blah, blah. And I think they said combining Vikings with Goths and Italians because Vikings have good eco. So like maybe Vikings instead of Khmer, for example, as we see yellow try and defend. Um, and it's true, Vikings actually used to be the classic slinging civilization because of their economy. But also they get more HP on their infantry. So maybe you could have Vikings make condos too. I don't know. Anyways, it was an idea, and this person came in, right, and they were just like, man, T90, like, it's such a cool strat, and I agree, it's amazing, it's so cool to see. Here we have Japanese, well, soon-to-be Japanese champion Oliver Red. These two are getting their revenge. <laughs> but uh, the reality is, I think Sling in general is incredibly strong, but what a combination here, right? A combination of... Uh, different bonuses at play. I, I guess, again, you have to have Italians and Goths for this to work. Poles, probably just for the economy. Itali uh, excuse me, Khmer, probably just for the economy as well. And also, you know, maybe they've done it enough times. Like, there's no way that this is the first time that this team has tried this. Maybe it does go late game sometimes, right? And then it becomes an even game if they do more damage to some of the other players. And they want, like, a real strong powerhouse civilization. Anyways, GG's called here, and Yellow, he doesn't want to quite want to quit yet. He's got to Elite Ballista Elephants. Credit to him. This guy slung his heart out, and now he's got Elite Ballistas, but uh, you know, Red is he's going to be dead. I mean, he has resigned at this point, but he's going to lose everything. Uh, that, that pain is going to come to Yellow quite quickly. I think Yellow is just like, I made my units. Let me play with them, you know? I've been there. But I, I, I think, like, if these guys were to play... 10 games against each other, these teams. A variety of settings. I think that the team that has won this game here would win 10 out of 10. I think they're that good. Um, I, I Maybe there's some slight bias, right? Because, you know, it's an American crew. But the, the point is, they're super, super good. They almost died to that, right? They, they, they that could have worked. Like, honestly, I think there was a window. I mean, Red did a fantastic job on Gray. Red did a fantastic job on Teal. But if he just had a couple more stragglers, if he maybe would have stopped Gray from rebooming as much and moved to green a minute or two faster, gotten into green's base, like denied this castle. Remember he took that one out? There was one here. Deny that castle, get in, take out the other one, prevent him from making Boyars. I think even if he's just producing out of one castle, I think you overrun him and then you're just up against blue. And then... If you genuinely do force like three players from the other team into a reboom and it's just Arbalest, then you can go Huskarl. I actually think that could have worked. Now, having seen Sling a lot before, I think that a mistake here, possibly, it's hard to say, I'd have to really break down and analyze this. and I don't think we're going to do that, but I think a mistake possibly was them going Castle Age. Um, what happened was this team clicked Castle Age. And that was 800 food, 200 gold. That wasn't going to red. Red no longer had 100 plus military. Um, I also won't think that, like, you know, maybe the civs were chosen quite nicely here by the other team. Uh, they were they were well placed with options to defend from it. But I, I personally think if you're going to sling, right, if you're just going to YOLO it like that, 
just continue that, right? Red didn't have his own economy to rely on at that point. He really needed the influx of resources. So anyways, that was a, a 1v4 game. Uh, look at this. 742 units lost there from Red. The KD is not great. KD fantastic for Blue and Green who were able to get the job done. Like we said, Boyars insanely strong in those scenarios. So it was good that, for Green that he had slabs. Um, let's see. Total resources distributed here. Okay, so, I mean, this is ridiculous. 41,000 resources were received by Red. <laughs> um, total resources collected uh, by him was 32K. So if this data is correct here, he had about 73K resources in that game. They were dead for like the last 10 or 15 minutes. He received those resources early. I actually would like to check. You know what's kind of interesting? Let's go to like... Okay, let's go. What time did these guys hit Castle Age? Now we're, now we're diving deep. Stay with me here. I have a question for you. Um, okay, so Castle Age around 28 minutes. So let's go to 25. As of 25 minutes, so this is right around the time that orange and yellow are starting to bank resources. He had received 20k resources and collected 12k. So at this point of the game, he had 31,000 resources collected, which is 8,000 more than these players who, you know, have free booms. And he's got goth discount on his units. That's why he was able to have so many. Actually, you know what's really funny here? Watch this, guys. I don't use these that frequently. Oh, boy. So much data. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Okay, what we want here... There's total pop, right? But that, that doesn't even tell the whole story. We want military pop. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> oh, that is so freaking cool, man. And it um it says wait, it says military population's only 50 there. What? Sorry, I'm gonna zoom to the end. Anyways, as that happens. Oh, okay. Oh, it's because it's relative to everything else that's out there, right? So this is 52. But it's higher because they basically had nothing on the other team. And then the team had more and 166 is there. Makes sense. So I wanted to ask you guys what you thought of this video. Um, let me know if you th wasn't thought it was enjoyable. Uh, I, I think it balanced out quite nicely, right? You kind of had that underdog team trying something wacky and something crazy. Um, and also ask me if you... What, what, would, what would you think if this happened to you, right? Like, what do you think about this being possible in the game? I... It's a bit of a tricky thing, right? I think like one sling is not new, but I have had people bringing up to me recently like, hey, this is a thing. This is a thing. This is a thing. And so I think the word is kind of spreading on this. And I mean, if it spreads to evenly matched games with consistency, I think people are not going to like it. And, you know, the, there's going to be a question in the comments. So I'll just get to it ahead of time. And that question is going to say, T90, how do you stop sling? Well, Often, sometimes you have to sling yourself, right? So like, for example, um, if when, when Gray starts to die, Teal could have said, okay, I'm probably going to die as well. Let me send, instead of going imp, let me send all my resources to you, green. And that would have propped green up and put green in, the, in a better position. I think we did have some resources sent. But sometimes the way to beat Sling is just to Sling. I remember tournaments from years back where in a 4v4 on closed maps, it was two people slinging, two people fighting. 4v4s were 2v2s. It was crazy. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, shout out to Locke and Team USAB. You guys are really good players. Locke, thanks for sending me this game. He sent me a message with this and said I needed to check it out. So it was a fun one. Um, that's it for me. Uh, man, I'm at a weird state where I just want to record more content and I don't want to stop talking and uh, I'm going to have to now. We're going to have to leave each other for the day. See you in another video tomorrow. All right, guys. Thank you.